You know, people come up to me all the time and, and they, they say, you can't be the person who's written all these things, who has had four generations of exile, its grandfather, his father, yourself, and, and your children, and, and you, you can't be the person who's, who's seen uh, terrors and, and has, has survived coups and has changed more countries than other people change their shoes or their neckties. You can't be somebody who has survived death and who's been gone back to his country and been betrayed. You can't be that person. You can't be so full of joy and so full of hope. And the truth is, yes, I can be. And I can be, I think, fundamentally. Because I had a moment in time, I lived through a revolution, a revolution of absolute hope and absolute joy. Everybody was changing the world and changing themselves. And there's just nothing like it. To watch illiterate peasants feel that they can be the owners of the land, to watch workers feel that they can be the owners of the factory where they work, to watch intellectuals like myself feel that they can be the owners of the imagination and of the mass media and of the whole country air and of the words, there's just nothing like it. And then the dream was crashed. One day there was a million of us marching down the Alamedas of history, and the next day we were running for our lives, and many of those people were killed. They were exiled, they were disappeared, they were tortured. And I went to exile. And if the country was crushed and democracy was crushed, well, I was super crushed. I was just, it was, I felt as if I was just being torn apart. And for me, the, the main problem as a writer was that I became silent. I, I lost my voice. I didn't know what to say because the words that I had said, the dream I had, seemed to have been destroyed. It seemed to have led not to joy and brotherhood and friendship and, and solidarity, but to the destruction of everything, to death. And so I had to find a way of speaking about that dream and to keep that hope alive without lying about it at all. I had to learn the lessons. I had to learn that there were mistakes that we made during that revolution, and yet not say goodbye to the desire for that revolution itself. I had to find out that one needs to be cautious and prudent. One needs to compromise. One needs to be careful. One needs not to dream as a wild man would, but to dream in the rationality of reality. And I had to learn that, and I had to learn at the same time not to throw the whole dream out, not to become conservative, not to betray the, the, the people who had dreamt that with me. I needed that. And I'm not sure, but it took me a long time. It took me many, many years to write this book. This book is the story of how I kept on dreaming. And yet at the same time, I learned many lessons. So that dream, the next time that it comes up and it keeps on coming up, would be a better dream, would be a dream that would be within the confines of what can really be possible. And yet I continue to think that everything is possible. You just have to learn. Uh, you have to learn many things.